Man, back in the 90s, it almost felt like a privilege to be a kid as far as cartoons went. We had so much to choose from. SWAT Cats, Biker Mice from Mars, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Street Sharks, Inspector Gadget, Captain Planet, and of course, Mighty Max. And that's just a very small percentage of the cartoons that we had to choose from. Like I said, there were so many and all of them were so, so well written and good. Or they were just so over the top and stupid that we loved them anyway. But Mighty Max for me was a special one. One. It ran for a very limited amount of time, and of course there was reruns, but the actual running of the show was only for two seasons from 93 to 94, and 40 episodes in total. Most of the time when I ask people if they remember Mighty Max, they say no. It kind of blows my mind because it was so popular even though it ran for such a short amount of time. The show is about a boy named Max who receives a special hat that is capable of projecting wormhole-like portals, which he uses to travel through space and time. Max is accompanied by a bird humanoid friend named Virgil and his supposedly immortal bodyguard Norman. Both of these characters help Max on his adventures and help him destroy the monsters and minions of the main antagonist in the show, Skullmaster, who is voiced by Tim motherfucking Curry. It was one of those 90s cartoons where it pushed the limits and I know a lot of parents complained about how violent it was at times and some episodes even starting off with the main monster of the episode killing off a random victim before the show's intro starts, but despite its short runtime on television, it spawned a number of different things like toys, watches, electronic handhelds, and even video games. And one of the most successful pieces of merchandise was their line of Mighty Max Adventure Set toys, also known as Polly Pocket for boys, which I happen to have right here. Now if you're too young to remember what Polly Pockets are, and granted I don't know if they even still make Polly Pockets, they are basically an all-in-one play set, but miniaturized, which was exactly what the Mighty Max adventure sets were, but these were targeted towards boys. There was a ton of these adventure sets for Mighty Max, each one was themed after a different type of monster, with each one having its own customized adventure on the inside. It would usually come with two monsters and one Mighty Max figure, or something like that, but the pieces were so small that they got lost so easily, and finding a complete set is kind of rare, and if you do, they're really expensive. There was a multitude of different sizes that these adventure sets came in, even ranging from as small as a watch. And even McDonald's had their own line of Mighty Max toys that were called Shrunken Heads, I believe. Alright, let's open one of these things and see what kind of adventures await us. The first one I'm going to be taking a look at is called Escape from Skull Dungeon. This one was the most memorable one to me, I think. It was the most popular out of the horror heads, which is what this set is called. Every time you open one of these things, you knew that there was going to be some sort of little moving part that you could play with. When I was a kid, I had a fascination with secret passageways and trapdoors and revolving bookcases, secret spiral staircases, anything cool like that. I just, I loved that shit. And even still in 2018, I can appreciate all of the little moving parts. It makes my inner 90s child giggle. Tee hee hee. This one also had a little lever that you can pull. It didn't activate any sort of trigger mechanism that pushed up the operating table. You know, you, you kind of had to use your imagination a little bit with, with these things. I, I know that's tough these days thinking about having an imagination <laughs> because the future of the self. I want to go back. I want to go back. Ah! Ooh. Ugh, that was ugly. Sorry. Anyway, let's take a look at another adventure set that I own. This one's called the Temple of Venom. This one opened up in a pretty cool way. You have to unlatch the snake's head. Normally this set would come with a scorpion figure and a mummy figure, but I don't have those obviously. This one was pretty cool. It actually connected at the top from a little like plastic, I think it's, it's supposed to be like a rope or something, that attaches onto the snake's lower jaw, and I guess you're supposed to shimmy across it, but um, I don't have the second half of the rope. There's a couple little moving parts on this one as well. We have a mummy's tomb, which is where the mummy monster, I guess if it, you know, I had the piece, that's where that would go. And then we have a sarcophagus, which has a skull inside. Yay, secrets. Let's take a look at our next adventure set called Ice Alien. This one I only have one piece to. Originally, it comes with a couple different moving alien heads that attach to this piece right here. And at first I didn't know what it was, but then I looked up a picture online and it's actually 
actually the alien frozen in ice. We have a folding platform, which is where you're supposed to put the other figure that comes with this, which I don't have. It's a robot, but yeah, this one's pretty cool. It's like a cryogenic lair type lab thing. I don't know, but I like it. And the last adventure set that I own is, surprisingly enough, a McDonald's toy. Just like the Polly Pockets, the Mighty Max had a lot of different adventure sets, and the gimmick was that you wanted to collect all of them, and in the 90s, everyone wanted us to collect everything as kids. You know, you gotta get the whole set of this, you gotta collect them all, you gotta catch them all, and yeah, they engraved that into our brains, and still to this day, I, I want to collect toys and, and cool shit like this. This toy was nothing special though, like I said, it was just a shitty McDonald's toy, it's just a hunk of plastic. There's a little twisty thing on the bottom that makes Max spin around the Yeti, but that's about it. Um, and there's a dead Yeti up here, I think, with some gold. But that's it, you know, that's it. And that's going to be it for this video, guys. I wanted to give you a little peek into the past of my childhood and show you something that was really near and dear to me growing up. And even if not a lot of people remember it, it's something that I'm always going to remember. Even if I'm 100 years old, I'll still remember Mighty Max sitting in front of the TV on Saturday morning really early, eating a bowl of cereal and watching my favorite show. Thanks for watching.